One of the most challenging things we can face is the death of a loved one. I lost my father, I lost my brother, and I lost my best friend. And I had a hard time dealing with this. But I'm here to break down how I dealt with it, how I coped, and how I overcame it. Hopefully this can help you out too. So if you've lost a loved one, this is the perfect video for you. My name is Cyrus Asar, and my mission is to embody the emotion of overcoming. I believe we all fight battles we hide from the world. My objective is to help you win those battles through perspective. Stay tuned. The death of a loved one is extremely challenging. As I said, I lost my brother, I lost my best friend, and I lost my father. But how I got over it was this. I got to backtrack to tell you the stories that led to their demise and how I got through it. First, it was my father. And I seen it coming, but nothing kind of prepares you for when it actually happens. Like one time I really seen my father have a heart attack in front of me. Like I seen him have a heart attack and I remember him telling me to go upstairs and get this medicine and be able to put it under his tongue and all these different types of things. And I ended up rushing him to the hospital because calling an ambulance was going to take longer than it was going to take for me to drive him down. And I literally had to shoot him down to the hospital, run all the red lights, etc. And I remember having conversations with him about what would happen in the event that you pass away. And that was three years, four years prior to him actually passing away. But I remember that conversation about how deep it was about you might not be here because of how you take care of yourself. And there was some acceptance behind what he wanted to do. I remember him literally leaving the hospital and them telling, them telling me and him what he shouldn't eat and whatnot. And we would go to somewhere like an IHOP afterwards and the first thing he would get was bacon. And I say, they just told you, you cannot have this food. And he's like, well, I haven't had it in a long time. I kind of accepted how he looked at life under his circumstances. He knew he had a bad heart. He knew he had, you know, he had a stroke. He knew all these things, and he still chose to live a certain path of life. So if he accepted it, I have to accept it to a degree. Although it hurts, I accepted it. Second was my best friend. He died on a motorcycle. And ironically, he had a crash before that. And we had a deep conversation about it as well. And I'm like, bro, if you're going to keep jumping on this motorcycle, it's some protocols you should put in place in the event anything happened to you. God forbid anything happened to you. But it's always a possibility when you get in any vehicle, let alone a motorcycle, because it's not the same as a car hitting a car because people not paying attention. They texting and all this type of stuff. So when they swerve and you swerve, it's a way different than a car. So we had that conversation after his first accident. Then... I was like, listen, it's certain things we got to put in pro put in place. So we put it in life insurance policy in place. It's certain things that we did to protect him in the event that this happens. Well, unfortunately, it happened. He ended up wrecking on his motorcycle and passing away. And I remember that being more painful than my brother and my father. And I'll get to my brother in a second. Because when somebody wreck on a motorcycle... It's like abrupt, boom, you just get a call. You know, his life is gone. And I just was like, this is crazy because we had a conversation about this. And you know you shouldn't have got on it based upon the conversation we had, but I can't knock you for living the way that you want to live. So if you accept a lifestyle and the ramifications of what comes behind that lifestyle, I have to accept it as well. So the third thing, was my brother. But after my best friend passed out in Atlanta, I ended up going to Ohio and having a conversation with my brother about it. And I was like, man, it's crazy that, you know, he ended up passing on his motorcycle. But one thing it taught me is to put certain things in place, a life insurance policy. What protocols do you want in the event of your demise? What do you want to happen? You know? So I had this conversation with my brother. It's like, listen, man, who over this house? Who gonna get this? You have multiple kids. What's going to happen? What's going to happen in the event that you pass away? Because you've had a stroke too. You know, you had some, some health complications as well. So what's going to happen? So under my understanding, he put some things in place and unfortunately he passed away. And 
what let me know how to understand things is this. Or what helped me overcome things is this. If somebody passes away and they accepted their lifestyle behind that passing, then I have to accept it as well. Although it hurts. I mean, it hurts a lot. I still have to accept the lifestyle of which they want to live if this is what makes them happy. If my father, if we leave the hospital and a doctor just told him about having a stroke and having a heart attack and what foods he should stay away from, and the first thing he at, first thing he eats is a bacon sandwich after the doctor just told him, then it sounds to me that he accepted the lifestyle he wanted to live. So I have to accept it as well, although, as I said, it's painful. But who am I to force my, myself on somebody? I can give suggestions based upon the same suggestions you got from a professional. And I can enhance it. Like those times I brought them smoothies and juices and healthy meals and whatnot. But I'm not there to be around him 24-7. So the lifestyle he still choose to live, I have to accept as well. So if the doctor told him that these foods is causing a stroke or these things is causing this and you still continue to do it, as I said, um, although it hurts a lot, I have to also accept the life you've accepted for yourself. The same thing with my best friend. He wrecked on a motorcycle first and we had conversations about this and he chose to jump back on the motorcycle again. I it, It's it's funny because he even had a status. He posted a status on Instagram saying, this is my new bike after he crashed the last one. And somebody posted a comment like, take the keys out and put it up. I don't want anything to happen to you. He laughed it off. He got on a motorcycle and unfortunately he passed. But on the same note, he accepted the lifestyle he wanted to live. He accepted the motorcycle, he accepted all those things and whatever came with it. So... I have to accept it as well. Although I love him, although I didn't want him to get on it, if he choose to get on it, that's his choice. I have to accept that. So what I've learned by losing loved ones is if they accept a certain lifestyle, I have to accept it as well. And I have to take everything that comes with it. You can only try your best you can try your absolute best to help them, whether it's a food related thing and you provide them the right foods or whether whatever it may be, you provide them the proper infrastructure for them to be better. And if they choose not to accept that, that's on them. You cannot get mad at them, though. It's still their life. You never know what somebody else is dealing with, the ups and downs and all these things that they're dealing with. And this might be their proper coping mechanism. Eating these foods might be the proper coping mechanism riding his bike or whatever it might be the coping mechanism for the things they go in day in day out because it's not like we share everything with our friends and family it's things that i know you're dealing with right now that you don't share same thing as me things some things i do not share with my family and friends so we all have our mechanisms on how we deal with it but it's up to us to accept whatever mechanism somebody wants to do whether it is eating or whether it is riding this motorcycle and as i said it's going to hurt it's going to hurt but don't feel like it's your fault neither i couldn't take the bike away from him i couldn't smack the sandwich out my dad's hand it's only so much i can do because i'm not there 24 7 but you're not to blame for it neither because i meet a lot of people that feel like the death of their loved one is their fault it's not their fault that person chose this lifestyle, and I'm talking about the things we can control, such as a motorcycle or food or things like that. I'm not talking about a disease or, unfortunately, the death of an infant or something like that that we cannot control. I'm talking about the things we can control. So that's how I dealt with it. I hope this can help somebody because I had to understand that if they choose to live this lifestyle and they understand what comes along with this lifestyle, Although I disagree with it, I have to accept what they accept. This is their life. They want to live it to the fullest, so I must allow them. So that's what I learned. If you like this video and you feel like you can relate to it or you know somebody that can relate to it or you know somebody that this can help, please share, like, and comment. I greatly appreciate it.